Good morning, everyone. I'm Kate Kress. I'm John Fuse, and happy Easter. Happy Easter. He is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we are so happy. Now, we're not fresh as daisies because we were here last night for how many hours for the Easter vigil? Two and a half. Yeah, but it was beautiful. Watch it on the live stream if you didn't happen to be with us in person or on the live stream last night. It's It was an extraordinary evening. It does, and the Easter joy continues this morning with not one, not two, but three services. Three services, the first two of which have strings and trumpets and timpani. And then the second one is our, or the third one is our Korean language. Right, so, so. right. So much joy and so much celebration. We're so glad to be here. We're glad you're with us in this most fabulous day of the year. I'm wishing you a very happy Easter. Bye, everyone.
Hallelujah! Christ is risen. The Lord is risen Hallelujah. Hallelujah! Christ is risen. Hallelujah! Christ is risen. There is one body and one spirit. One Lord, one faith, one baptism.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, who through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, overcame death and opened us to the gate of everlasting life, grant that we who celebrate with joy the day of our Lord's resurrection may be raised from the death of sin by your life-given Spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from Jeremiah. At that time, says the Lord, I will be the God of all the families of Israel, and they shall be my people. Thus says the Lord. The people who survived the sword found grace in the wilderness. When Israel sought for rest, the Lord appeared to him from far away. I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, I have continued my faithfulness to you. Again, I will build you, and you shall be built, O Virgin Israel. Again, you shall take your tambourines and go forth in the dance of the merrymakers. Again, you shall plant vineyards on the mountains of Samaria. The planters shall plant and shall enjoy the fruit. For there shall be a day when sentinels will call in the hill country of Ephraim, Come, let us go up to Zion, to the Lord our God. The word of the Lord.
a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Then Peter began to speak to them. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil. For God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him, that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake. For an angel of the Lord, descending from heaven, came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus, who is crucified. He is not here. For he has been raised from the dead, as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has been raised from the dead, and indeed he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came to him, took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. The Gospel of the Lord. Last summer, Alex and I were walking through a small town in northern Spain when we saw this beautiful church across the street. Being a church nerd, I asked if we could pop inside and take a look for a moment. So we crossed the street, and just as I was about to place my hand on the door, a rather vivacious elderly woman ran up to us and said, do not go in there. 
the person who built this church has no taste. It's way too gaudy on the inside. <laughs> if you want to see the really beautiful church in this town, it goes seven blocks this way and one block that way. Off the plaza, you will see San Vicente Church. Go there instead. That church is the heart of the Basque people. I'd take you there, but I have a bus to catch. And as quickly as she appeared, she equally as sprightly went zooming down the street to her bus stop. It was a weird way to begin our vacation, but in it all, I found that brief interaction to contain the essence of our Easter story. You won't find what you're looking for in there. Go to this other place instead. Every year we kick off the Easter season with a gospel account of that early morning encounter. The details vary from author to author, but the essentials are the same. People arrive at a tomb to tend to a corpse, and they are unable to find what they are looking for. You can go in, but there's not much to see. Or as the angels say, he is not here, for he has been raised. Go to Galilee instead. There you will find him. And therein lies the beginnings of our Easter journey, the unsealing of our Paschal invitation, encountering the living Christ not where we are looking, but in the most unexpected of places. The stories we'll hear on our journey through Eastertide are strangely devoid of divine glitz and glitter. No passages about restoring the sight of the blind or a paralyzed person leaping up from their mat. Instead, what we'll listen to are some of the stories which almost seem to showcase Jesus' humanity the most holding out his hand so that Thomas can see his wound, asking for a piece of broiled fish because the risen Christ is starving, and his disciples recognizing him by that very special way that he takes the bread, blesses it, breaks it, and gives it. In many ways, it's counterintuitive You'd think the really big miracles would follow after Jesus' resurrection. But that's not what we hear, and perhaps that is Christ's Easter sermon. Don't go looking for me in the miraculous. I will not be there. Instead, look for me in the common. That is where I'll be. Look for me in water, and I will sanctify all who are baptized with it. Look for me in bread, and I will feed you in more ways than you could ever imagine. Look for me in the smile of a stranger, and I will warm your heart. Look for me in the eyes of a newborn, and my spirit will fill you with joy. Look for me and your enemies, and I will give you my peace. Look for me when you are tired and heavy laden, and I will refresh you. And look for me as you slowly close your eyes that one last time as you take your very last breath, and I will show you paradise, because I am resurrection, and I am life. 
who needs glorious signs and wonders. The risen Christ is alive and well in the miracle of God's creation, breathing new life into the beauty of those tender moments. Alleluia. He is not here. Go instead to Galilee, and there you will find him. Alleluia. The candidate for holy baptism will now be presented. Will you be responsible for seeing that the child you present is brought up in the Christian faith and life? Yes, I will. I will. I will, God help. will you, by your prayers and witness, help this child to grow into the full stature of Christ? I will. With God's help. 
do you renounce Satan and all the spiritual forces of wickedness that rebel against God? I renounce them. Do you renounce the evil powers of this world which corrupt and destroy the creatures of God? I renounce them. Do you renounce all sinful desires that draw you from the love of God? I renounce them. Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your savior? I do. Do you put your whole trust in his grace and love? Do you promise to follow and obey him as your Lord? I do. And this question is for all you. And if you feel so moved, please respond with a very hearty, we will. Will you who witness these vows do all in your power to support this person in his life in Christ? We will. Destroy those who are committing themselves to Christ and renew our own baptismal covenant. Do you believe in God the Father? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in the prayers? Will you persevere in resisting evil and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will. will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will. will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? I will. Let us now pray for this child who is to receive the sacrament of new birth and for those who have renewed their commitment to Christ. Grant, O Lord, that all who are baptized into the death of Jesus Christ, your Son, may live in the power of his resurrection and look for him to come again in glory, who lives and reigns now and forever. Amen. Amen. our God. Thank you, Almighty God, for the gift of water. Over it, the Holy Spirit moved in the beginning of creation. Through it, you led the children of Israel out of their bondage in Egypt and in the land. Your son received the baptism of John and was anointed by the Holy Spirit as the Messiah, the Christ to lead us through his death and resurrection from the bondage of sin into everlasting life. We thank you, Father, for the water of baptism. In it, we are buried with Christ and his death. By it, we share in his resurrection. Through it, we are reborn by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, in joyful obedience to you, we bring into this fellowship that to him in faith, baptizing them in Son, now sanctify this water, we pray you, by the power of your Holy Spirit, that those who here are cleansed from their sin and born again may continue forever in the risen life of Christ our Savior. To you and to the Holy Spirit, we all honor and glory now and forever. Amen.
David, praise you in the name of the Father. David, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that by water and the Holy Spirit you have bestowed upon your servant the forgiveness of sins and have raised him to new life in grace. Sustain him, O Lord, in your Holy Spirit. Give him an inquiring and discerning heart, the courage to will and to persevere, a spirit to know and love you, and the gift of joy and wonder in all your works. Amen. Let us welcome the newly baptized. Let your great and loving hand ever be over this your servant. Let your Holy Spirit be ever with him, and so lead him in the knowledge and obedience of your word, that he may serve you in this life and dwell with you in the life to come through Jesus Christ our Lord. And now the peace of Christ be always with you.
and peace to all of you worshiping right alongside us at home this morning. Peace and happy Easter. Happy Easter to everyone here. It's a glorious day and we celebrate with darling baby David and his family. What a wonderful day to be baptized into the household of Christ. And also a day deserving of so much thanks to our own music director, Canon James Buonamani, for the magnificent music today. In okay, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> and of course, to the glorious, glorious artists that make up the Choir of St. James. And to the amazing strings and trumpets and timpani that we have this morning. If you, if you are here for the first time, you might be wondering, is this a, a typical morning at St. James? It almost is. All right, not the strings and the trumpets and the timpani, but this, this amazing choir is with us almost every weekend, and it is a sheer joy to be in the presence of such glorious, glorious music. And now walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself an offering and sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, God Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death, he has destroyed death. And by his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name.
Holy and gracious God, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and creator of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, Almighty God, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people, the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say in our many languages, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God.
before the post-communion prayer, I just want to tell you that we just gave communion to a member who is going to be 108 this year, and she's with us this morning. Pray. Eternal God, you have graciously accepted us as living members of our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage, love, gladness, and singleness of heart. Through Christ our the Father, by whose love Christ was raised from the dead, open to you who believe the gates of everlasting life. Amen. God, the Son who is bursting from the grave, has won a glorious victory. Give you joy as you share the Easter faith. Amen. God, the Holy Spirit, who filled the disciples with the life of the risen Lord, empower you and fill you with Christ's peace. Amen. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit 
be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen.